they have no value of any human life other than the Jewish life. They look at themselves as the chosen people and anyone else is like animals. And they, they said that on TV and they can do whatever they want to, the, to any genocides they call them. This is written in their books. What we reject is terrorism. terrorism. These people don't believe in justice. They do not believe in freedom, except for their own citizens. This is who they are. And that is very clearly from their actions. No one condemnation. We have not heard one condemnation about killing 2,000 children. 2,000 have been already killed. In the last three days, every day, every day, 300 people are killed. 150 of them are children. This is the average that we're getting. And no one condemnation, not for even a child. That is the kind of civilization, the Western civilization is sending a message to the whole world. Let there be no doubt, the United States has Israel's back. But we have something that they don't have. Allahu ma'ana. Allah is with us. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not be sad. Allah is with us. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Tarek Soedan. We are very happy and honored to have you with us as to World Eternity. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. It is my honor and thank you for having the opportunity for me to reach your audience. Mashallah, you have a great number of audience all over the world. So today we're going to ask you about uh, the recent event that is happening in Palestine. Yes. As we know, there's a huge tragedy that is happening in Gaza, Palestine. And there are thousands of martyrs and wounded people and their numbers are increasing each day. The hearts of the Ummah are in pieces. In the latest events, there are people who say Hamas started all these by killing civilians and that's why Israel is attacking. It is self-defense. Can this be looked at like this? Can all these bombings on Gaza be justified like that? Thank you for the question. This is a major thing that has been going on in Western media. And they are trying to show the whole thing as if the whole thing started on October 7th. No, it did not. It started 75 years ago. It even started before of that. It started when the British occupied Palestine and then gave it as a gift to the Palestinians, uh, to the Israelis. And the Israelis came from all over the world, including the president, who applied for a visa, and we have the picture of that visa, and they took the lands from the Palestinians, and then when the Palestinians started to resist, then they called this an attack on them. This is not an attack, this is self-defense, this is resistance. If you occupy my house and I try to get you out, that is resistance. If you take a picture just of me resisting you, then you show it to the whole world yeah. as if you are the one that is a victim. This is nonsense. What the Jews yeah. and the Israelis and the, and the British have done is a major crime to humanity. And it is the right of any occupied people to resist and free their country. Your audience come from all over the world. It's a very simple question to all of you. What would you do if your land is occupied? Wouldn't you try to free it by using all means? That is what the Palestinians are doing. Can I ask, so did the Muslims do something to Israelis in the past that they are doing all this in return? I mean, are Israeli people seeking some kind of revenge? What is, what is the problem? Okay, Ahmed, I, I wrote the whole history in my encyclopedia about Islamic history, starting with the creation of the whole world until today. And the best two periods the Jews lived ever in anywhere in the world were under the Muslim rule in Andalus in Spain. And this is in their books. They call it the golden age of the Jews. And this is in their books. And I have the reference from their books. And the period they lived under the Ottoman Empire, the Islamic Empire in the whole world, they, they were not persecuted, they, they had their synagogues, they lived freely, they worshipped freely. They were the merchants in the whole Arab and Muslim world under the Ottoman rule. Nobody persecuted them. 
So uh, where did this come from? It comes from them, not from us. So what root causes can we find in this, you know, attacks to uh, Gaza? So what do they have in their creed that they are doing all this? Are Zionists so committed to their religion or do they have some other agenda and they use religion as an excuse for that? Yeah, I wrote the Encyclopedia of the Jews and I wrote the whole uh, history of the Jews. I wrote the whole creed that is in their books, the Torah and the Talmud. And I wrote about their present situation in Israel. Two things. First of all, in their religion, in their creed, it is very clear that they look as themselves as the chosen people and anyone else is like animals. And they, they said that on TV lately as we all heard it. So they have no value of any human life other than the Jewish life. This is written in their books. But that is only an excuse. Israel is not really a religious state. They claim to be Jewish in name. They don't practice Judaism. Most of the state, most, most of the people are secular. They do not believe in any religion. And they don't abide by uh, Judaism. And you see the, the corruption and you see how the adultery and everything that is forbidden in their books, you see it everywhere in their life. So it is only an excuse. It comes from so, cruelty. Uh, yeah. It comes from, be, from feeling this way. They, they were fed this since their childhood, that they are the chosen ones and they can do whatever they want to, the, to any genocides, they call them. So anyone who, who is in the whole world, is, is, they, can, they can exterminate the cockroaches for them. That is how they look to others. They don't say it clearly, but it is very clearly in their books. And it is written in my book, The Encyclopedia of the Jews. So can I ask, do Zionists have this view of when we have all these lands from Nile to Euphrates, then we will have the heaven on the earth? So don't they have a concept of hereafter? They do have a concept, of course, of the hereafter. And they also have a concept of the Messiah. But they do not believe in Jesus as the Messiah. It is very clear written in their books that Mary, the mother of Jesus, may Allah be pleased with her, was an adulteress and that Jesus was a son of an adulteress and he was a liar and they, they persecuted him and to them they, they crossed him, which did not happen, of course, in our religion, but they believe that they did. So this is also mentioned in the Quran. And they said, we killed the Messiah, the son of Mary. So to them, I, 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 what, what I really never understood is why would the Christians side with the Jews? Why would they side with Israel? This is what they say about them. Now, while we glorify Mary and we glorify Isa, it is part of our religion that if you do not believe in, in Jesus, you are not even a Muslim. This is what is written in our books. Compare that to what is written in their books. So this is, this is how, they, how they are. It is how they look at others. And unfortunately, this is what will happen to the whole world. They, will, they think it is the heavens on the earth, but it is not the end for them. For them, someday, their Messiah will come. And with that, they will control the whole world. Not only the Arab world, the whole world. It is written in their books. So this is a cancer again. And again, be aware of this cancer before it spreads. So they just want to make this world their heaven, basically, right? They want to, um, again, we have to distinguish between the religion and the people. We, we Muslims have no problem with the Jewish religion. It's up to them. Sure. Everyone, sure. everyone has the right to believe whatever they want, to pray as if they want. They build your synagogues. We have no problem with all of that. The problem happened with Zionism when some of the Jews became Zionists and some of the Christians yes. became Zionists and they took over our land and they want to exterminate us. That's when the problem happened and we will not let it go. We will not submit and we will resist. Even if the Palestinians are exter exterminated, two billion Muslims will not be exterminated and they will take you out one day. So 
Why don't the states that claim to be in favor of justice, like the US, England, Germany, France, etc., speak out against this? These countries are also known as, their, as the defenders of freedom of speech, but they even forbid protests against Israel. So how contradictory is this? Can we say that they showed their true colors? Yeah, I lived with them for a long, long time. This freedom and justice and so on is only internally inside America, inside France, inside Britain, inside Australia, inside these countries. When it comes to outside, what did they do to the whole world? Look what France did to Algiers, 140 years of occupation. 1.5 million Algerians were killed on their hands. What did, they, what did Italy do to Libya? What did uh, France do to, to Syria and Lebanon? And what did Britain did to the whole Arab world and so many Muslim countries? This is who they are. What did America do to Afghanistan and to Iraq and to, every, to Vietnam, to every place they went to? These people, Ya Akhi Ahmed, these people don't believe in justice. They do not believe in freedom except for their own citizens. This is who they are. And that is very clearly from their actions. No one condemnation. We have not heard one condemnation about killing 2,000 children. I'm not counting the others, just children. 2,000 have been already killed. Ya Akhi Ahmed, in the last three days, every day, every day, we 300 people are killed 150 of them are children this is the average that we're getting and no one condemnation and these three countries that you're talking about Akhi Ahmed, not one condemnation not for even a child that is the kind of civilization the western civilization is sending a message to the whole world so I want to ask you this. Throughout history, Christians, Jews, and Muslims fought intensely against each other to have the control of Jerusalem, Al-Quds. What is the reason for this? Why is this city so important for Muslims? Yeah, it is not the city. It is the sacred places, Al-Aqsa. Al-Aqsa is a masjid, is a mosque since the time of Adam. This is mentioned in Muslim books. It is since the time of Adam, two holy mosques were built. The holy mosque in, or the holy Kaaba in Mecca and Al-Aqsa in Jerusalem. And the Prophet ﷺ was asked specifically about this by the companions. And he said Al-Aqsa was built 40 years only after al Kaaba. It is not something that the Jews built and we took it from them. It has been a holy place. Now, this has to be very clear, ya akhi, in every mind that hears us. Muslims never took this land from the Jews. When the fight happened between Muslims and the, the Byzantines who controlled uh, Palestine, and Muslims won over, the mu Muslims took it from the Christians. We did not take it from the Jews. And we have, we still have the declaration and the agreement between Umar ibn al-Khattab, the second companion of the Prophet Sallallahu the second Khalif, and the Christians. And in that, the Christians surrendered and they made several requests and all of them were granted to them. And the first request was they have freedom of worship. And we said, this is part of our religion. We don't compulse anyone to, to uh, pray the way we are or embrace Islam. In the whole of history, one person was compulsed to embrace Islam. And they said something very strange to us. And they said to us that, please do not let any Jew enter Jerusalem. This is their request of the Christians to surrender uh, Jerusalem. And so Jerusalem was surrendered. They surrendered it peacefully. Muslims did not enter it by force. It was an agreement. It was a surrender by the Christians. And Muslims entered. And ya akhi, there was no one Jew, not one Jew in the whole of Jerusalem. Muslims, ya akhi, never persecuted Jews, never persecuted Christians. Christians persecuted Christians. Christians persecuted Jews throughout history, but never Muslims. So throughout his life, the Messenger of Allah والسلام, set an example for his Ummah in every aspect of life. And we know that he dealt with the Jews in Medina and eventually succeeded. If you look at his Sirah, his application, what pathways should Muslim leaders follow so that this can be solved? The Prophet وسلم, used the peaceful way. See what happened, Akhi? When the Prophet وسلم, migrated from Mecca to Medina, Muslims were a majority already. 
and he was immediately the leader of Medina. He did not take it by force. He did not kill anyone to take over Medina. The people of Medina chose him and they accepted him and these are the majority. So what did he do? He immediately, and it is written in details, and I have it in my books, it's in details. It's called Wathiqatul Medina. What is it? It is the, 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 the Treaty of Medina. And in this treaty, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions every tribe of the Jews. And he said in, in it that they have their houses and their lands and their gardens and their weaponry and they have their rights of worship and trade and freedom. So he gave them all rights on one condition that they will defend Medina. They are, they are the citizens of Medina. See, Medina and Islam, when it establishes a state, it does not establish it for Muslims as the Jews have started Israel for the Jews and they treated the Arabs and the Muslims as second class citizens if they give them citizenship in the first place. So this is an apartheid state. We are not. So it was not apartheid state. They were citizens with full rights. And among the agreement is that if the Jews are attacked, we will protect them. But if we are attacked, they will share with us. And it is written. And they all signed on it. So it was the peaceful way. And then later on, when they had conspiracies against the Prophet Sallallahu that, that was discovered, then they were punished. And when they were punished, no woman was punished. No child was punished. No old man was punished. No one who refused the conspiracy was punished. It is only the conspirators that were punished. And that is a very clear right. So the Prophet Sallallahu took the peaceful right. And even, ya akhi, he, we had four wars. When he had the first war with one tribe of the Jews, he did not attack the rest of the Jews. They went on with us for years after that. Years, not months, not, not days, years after that. We never had a problem with the Jews. We never had a problem since the, the start of Islam. Until today, I say it very clearly as a scholar of Islam, we do not have a problem with the Jews. We have a problem with Zionists who took our land. And we have the right to free our land and resist. And that is the right of any person in the whole world. So again, it is always the peaceful way. And we are willing, by the way, we are willing to go back to living peacefully with them. They are the ones who are refusing peace, not us. So do you see any information about the end of Israel in the Quran or in the Hadith literature? It is very clear that there is a battle between us and them. This is mentioned in the Quran. There will be two major battles. And by the way, in each battle, this is not one of them. Huh? The first battle has not started yet. It is mentioned in the Quran. It is mentioned very clearly in the Quran that we will enter Al-Aqsa and they will take it back and we will enter it again forever. This is all mentioned in the Quran. وَلِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ the believers will enter the mosque the same way they entered it the first time. So it, they, we will enter it twice. But by the way, the Quran does not say it is the end of the Jews. It is the end of their, land, uh, of their state, but not the Jews. And it is mentioned in the Quran that the Jews will continue. It is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that the Jews will continue. We have no problems with the religion and the, and the Jewish people. We have a problem with this Zionist state, apartheid state that took our land from us and took our holy mosques and they provoked our masjid every day. Why did these events of October 7th happen? Every day they were provoking us by entering our holy masjid, holy mosque continuously day after day with these fanatics and we have warned them and warned them and warned them. What would we have to do? Just submit to them? and let them have our holy mosque, we will never, Muslims will never submit that. As Muslims, unfortunately, we are helplessly watching these events at home individually. So what would you say to a Muslim who asks, what can I do as an individual? We are not helpless, ya akhi. alhamdulillah, we are not helpless. But as individuals, we can do a lot. Wallahi, ya akhi. since 1967, we came back also so much on media. What you are doing is wonderful. 
What the young generation is doing is wonderful. Before, in the previous years, it was TVs that controlled the news. Today, it is social media that is controlling the news. At that time, they were able to deceive the whole world. Today, everything that is happening is recorded and transmitted to the whole world immediately. For the first time, ya akhi, we see an army, an army in the social media that is facing the Western media. For the first time, you're doing a wonderful job. The young men and women that are tweeting and writing and putting on Facebook are, are fighting back. I, ya akhi, I have 18 millions and Facebook and Twitter had limited me. Today, only 1,800 can see my posts. But what do I do? I take my posts after I put them in Facebook and I send it to people like you, young men and women, and they translate it and they, they post it. Wallahi, okay, the 18 millions became hundreds because of young men and women like you. You cannot tweet, you are not helpless. You cannot donate, you cannot helpless. You cannot make dua, you are not helpless. They have a lot of money. They have a huge media machine that is trying to do, distort reality. But Alhamdulillah, our media machine is growing because of you. And our wealth is growing because of the generosity of the rich men and women in the Muslim world and the young men and women and the poor men. Even, even the poor are, do, are donating. So everyone is, is sharing in this battle. But we have something that they don't have. Allahu ma'ana. Allah is with us. لا تحزن إن الله معنا. Do not be sad. Allah is with us. Uh, Dr. Tariq Suedan, thank you so much for your answers. We learned a lot from you. And may Allah preserve you. And inshallah, we can meet in person as well. So may Allah give thank barakah you to all so your efforts much, for this team. Thank you and your team. Mashallah, you're doing wonderful work. By the way, I have a book about jihad. And in the book of jihad, I mention that jihad is not only carrying a weapon. Jihad is also carrying a microphone like you. Barakallahu. Yes. Thank you.